Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom attends a Bremer Literary Festival in Scotland. King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands opens a wind farm on Imoiden Beach. And Crown Princess Mary of Denmark attends a conference in Copenhagen. All this and much more coming up next on your Royal Daily News. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing well. My name is Alexandra, and welcome to your Royal Daily News for Sunday, October 1st, 2023. Her Royal Highness, Crown Princess Mary of Denmark, accompanied by the Managing Director of the Mary Foundation, Ms. Meta Ostergaard, attended the opening of the BL Denmark's General Housing Days 2023, held at the Tivoli Hotel in Copenhagen. BL Denmark's General Housing is an interest and industry organization for public housing organizations and the one million people who live in public homes. Together, the organization works for the interests of its members and residents by seeking to influence the development of the public housing sector, both economically, technically, and socially. According to a press release, the theme of this year's conference is Commitment, Democratic Participation and Community. We gather, quote, when we gather, we focus on how you and I can make a difference together, because when we engage with each other and in our local area, we help to strengthen everyday democracy and the community where we live, end quote. During the conference, the Crown Princess gave the opening speech, as well as attended several panel sessions, including We Greet the Neighbor and How We Strengthen Communities. His Royal Highness, Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark, accompanied by the Danish Minister of Defense, the Ambassador of the United States of America to the Kingdom of Denmark, along with members of the Danish and Norwegian Armed Forces, attended a ceremony for the reception of the first F-35A Lightning II fighter jets from the American company Lockheed Martin, held at the fighter wing Skustrup Air Base in Voines. Last month, His Royal Highness Prince Joachim of Denmark in his capacity as a defense attaché, spoke with the magazine The European Defense Review, stating, quote, As a newly appointed defense industrial attaché, it is a privilege to oversee the first aircraft ferry of Denmark's new F-35A Lightning II. The F-35A is a huge step forward in technology. The arrival of the F-35A provides Denmark and the Danish Armed Forces a beacon to transform the armed forces into the fifth generation. It is a pleasure to note that this unique piece of military hardware also holds Danish industrial components and is a testimony to the close ties between the United States and Denmark." End quote. According to a press release from the Danish Armed Forces, the F-35A is the world's most advanced combat aircraft. With its advanced systems, the aircraft can tie together all units on the battlefield and secure valuable information to units in the air, on land, and at sea, while still being a strong threat to a potential enemy on its own. Denmark has bought a total of 27 F-35A fighter jets to replace the F-16 fighter jets. The F-35A is a crucial tool in the future enforcement of Denmark's sovereignty and international defense cooperation. The first four Danish F-35As are now in Denmark, and according to the plan, the F-35A will be fully implemented in the Danish defense in 2027. On Saturday in Den Haag, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands paid a working visit to Pro Demos on the occasion of the 12 and a half year anniversary of the House for Democracy and the Rule of Law. Pro Demos helps to explain to visitors the Dutch systems that govern democracy and the rule of law, as well as to show what citizens themselves can do to exert political influence at the municipal, provincial, national, and European level. On Friday, the King opened the Dutch South Coast Wind Park on Imoiden Beach. According to RVD, the wind farm consists of 139 wind turbines, which have a total capacity of 1.5 gigawatts and are located 18 kilometers from the coast. The wind turbines provide about 1,500 megawatts of power 
which corresponds to the annual usage of 1.5 million Dutch households. The location was chosen due to the ideal wing conditions, the suitable soil, the limited water depth, and the proximity to the ports. Most importantly, several measures have been taken to limit the effects of the wind farm interrupting the habitats of birds, fishes, and mammals. Quote, for example, a double bubble screen to limit the underwater noise during pile driving to limit the impact for harbor purposes. Enlarged water replenishment holes in the foundations offer shelter for marine life inside the turbines. The first time the structure of a turbine itself is included in nature-inclusive wind farm design. Boulders and rocks of varying sizes were used during the construction of scour protection. At several scour protection sites, artificial rock reefs were added to make them more attractive to a wider number of fish, crabs, and crustaceans." End quote. Well, that was awfully nice of them. On Thursday evening, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands attended the Princess Maxima Center for Pediatric Oncology 5th Anniversary Benefit Gala held at the Berlache Stock Exchange in Amsterdam. On Friday, their Imperial Majesties, Emperor Norihito and Empress Masako of Japan, visited the Musashi Imperial Cemetery just outside of Tokyo. According to the Japanese newspaper FNN, the emperor, dressed in his morning clothes, first stepped in front of the mausoleum where Emperor Showa is buried, offered a tomogashi, and then a deep bow. Thereafter, the empress paid her respects as well as offered a tomogashi. His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, attended the opening of the second edition at the Grand Ocean Festival held at the Cité de la Mer in Cherbourg, France, on Friday. Held under the theme, Discoveries, Inventions, and Innovations, the Ocean Forces Us to Be Smart, the two-day conference provides an in-depth understanding of this extraordinary space that is the ocean, covering more than 70% of the surface of the planet, and the majority of which constitutes a heritage of humanity that is, quote, fundamental to preserve, end quote. Ain't that the truth? During Friday's conference, the Sovereign Prince gave a speech, as well as participated in the panel session entitled The Polar Station Under Construction in Cherbourg by Foundation Tara and CMN. During the session, the Sovereign Prince spoke about the Tara project. Quote, Accompanying this expedition and this scientific project is necessarily an adventure to advance science but also an extraordinary human adventure that includes an element of dreams and unforeseen events, which will also contribute to the final discoveries. With the Tara Project, we are effectively creating a part of the dream around this expedition. The Tara Project will allow us to better understand the mechanisms of the Arctic, on which little scientific data is available. The project aims to try to understand the interaction between ice and the ocean and the extent of its biodiversity." End quote. Prior to the opening of the Grand Ocean Festival, the Sovereign Prince visited the mechanical constructions of Normandy Shipyard, which is currently working on the construction of the Tara Polar Station, a project of the Tara Ocean Foundation. In Cascais, Portugal, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain, along with the President of the Republic of Portugal, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa presided over the inauguration of the third edition of the Portuguese Spanish Meeting, Challenges of the 21st Century, held inside the Auditorio Maria Jesus Barroso. According to the Spanish Royal Court, the meeting, organized by the Fundación Don Luis I and the Fundación Duques de Soria, with the support of the Cascais City Council, promotes the quote, exchange and knowledge of cultural and socioeconomic realities between Spain and Portugal. End quote. Her Majesty Queen Camilla of the United Kingdom attended day two of the 2023 Bremer Literary Festival in Bremer, Scotland on Saturday. The Queen attended the famous festival to support her son, British food writer and critic, Mr. Tom Parker Bowles, who hosted a panel discussion with award-winning chef and author, 
Mr. Rick Stein, and food critic, author, and podcaster, Ms. Grace Dent. According to a press release, the panel discussion focused on, quote, the joys of comfort food and home cooking. Grace's new book, Comfort Eating, inspired by her own award-winning podcast and Rick's latest publication, Rick Stein's Simple Suppers, will both be released in October 2023. And with this event providing a first glimpse into the stories surrounding these two new books, end quote. On Friday in Aberdeenshire, His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom visited the global underwater hub. According to Buckingham Palace, during the visit, the king viewed various exhibits, quote, demonstrating underwater diving technology, underwater 3D image capturing, and eco-friendly artificial reefs, which provide subsea protection and enhance biodiversity, end quote. And finally, Prince Constantine and Princess Dinitz of Bavaria announced the birth of their second son, Prince Nicholas, on Saturday morning. The little prince was born on August 10th, 2023. Look how cute their dog is. Oh, what a sweetie. And there you have it. Thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. I will be back tomorrow on Monday, October 2nd with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful Sunday afternoon and a great week ahead. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss a thing. And also, one more thing, I am so sorry I didn't upload a video yesterday, even though I said I would, but I decided to spend the entire day surfing again and I had a great time, so. Again, I apologize. So with that being said, again, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon, and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.